The Architecture Review Board of the City of Montgomery is a nine-member board approved by the City Council. We serve on a voluntary basis without compensation. Our procedure for conducting business is that the petitioner for each item will be asked to come forward, state your name for the record, and present your request. The board will ask any questions they have. Make sure that you get close enough to the microphone so that everybody can hear you. This, this room is lovely, but it does not have good acoustics. Um, we're also recording the meeting, and it, you have to speak into the microphone for it to get it. Uh, anyone wishing to, to speak about your proposal will be asked to come forward to that microphone and give their opinions. Once the request is heard and the board's decision is rendered, you may leave the meeting. However, if you have questions for staff, please wait until the meeting is over, which tonight is not a big deal, and ask the question, or you can go to the office tomorrow. Once public testimony and discussion for an item is concluded, the members of the board will deliberate and render a decision. Members with a personal or financial interest in any request are required to recuse themselves from voting. All decisions by the Architecture Review Board are final. Any aggrieved parties may appeal the decision of the board to the City Council within 15 days for procedural issues only. If your request is denied by the board, petitioners may appeal to the board's decision to the circuit clerk within 30 days of the meeting. We have five members present. It takes five votes to pass a motion. Because of the number of members present, if you'd like to delay your request, please let it not be known at the time that your request is announced. All right, tonight's uh, members present are Cedric Campbell. Elizabeth Brown, John Foshi, not here. Try again. <laughs> John Hayden. Yeah, we go. And Jake Johnson. All right. Hmm? Oh, Kay, I thought I said you, Katie. I'm sorry, Katie Williams, who is the vice chair. Should I fall over during the meeting? You will have to pick up and carry on. All right. Um, our first. Um, we have a new board member who's observing tonight, uh, Barry G Robinson. Barry, will you raise your hand? Barry, it's nice to have you, and we look forward to having you in the meeting. Uh, our first petitioner for tonight, Bryant Bagley, is not going to be here. His project is held over. So Suzanne Jensen in Cottage Hill. Suzanne, please go to the microphone and adjust it so that we may hear you and present your project. Okay, um, I have a uh, purchased the empty lot between my house and my neighboring house. And right now there's a temporary fence that's on that property. That's there, you can't really see the fence. But anyway, there's a temporary fence on that property that keeps my dogs from coming to the street. Mm -hmm. And so what I would like to do is put a permanent fence up there there's 20 to 25 feet from where the brick wall was allowed to fall down decades ago mm -hmm. to um, in front of a very large oak tree. There you can see in the drawing. And I would like to put a fence that goes to my residence on 532 to the house at 542, which is a rental property that I own. Um, and so that the fence would just come across the front of those properties. And that's all I'm asking. I have given you guys two options. My preferred option is, keep going, Christy. That's the blue line. This one, although it's in sideways. Uh, something, something like that that has four by four posts um, and uses a cattle fence, panels of eight foot cattle fence. They're really nice and strong. And um, I'm not sure if I need to, I'll put a decorative element at the top, but I may not do something that was lath-like, that just ha lattice-like, that just happened to be the only picture that I could find at the, okay. at the time. But that would be my preferred way of doing it. I prefer this way with a, a large heavy board at the top and maybe one running at the bottom also. Okay. Um, so that the fence is secured. 
um, and then a gate there would be a gate at the 532 side of the property okay. and then this is option number two that Christie's scrolling to which is a an aluminum kind of fence kind of it's reminiscent of the dog yard fence downtown mm -hmm. um, cost and or this is the kind of dog yard fence that they have out in East Montgomery but I didn't think that was would be as attractive um, and I, that's, I agree are there any comments from the audience about this project? You, you have neither a large crowd for or against you here tonight. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yes. Well, I want to commend you for creativity because this is much closer. It's a little taller than the kind of fence that one might find on a side yard or a backyard historically. Um, um, it's... It, Six, uh, five foot? Yeah, it would be more like three feet, but if you've got big dogs, I can understand why you want a taller fence. But yeah. this this is very nice, and I, I like the one without the lattice at the top better. Um, are you going to plant things on it or in front of it? I may, my if, you know, if I have ever have a life and time, I would garden that whole front perimeter, right. but at this point right now, it's just, it's just mowed grass. Where is it going to connect to the houses? Um, it will attach to midway through my front porch at 532. At 542, it would attach at the front of that porch. Mm -hmm. um, the air conditioner for 542 is going right. to be about yeah. three feet, two and a half feet behind where the fence line is. Um, Somebody from besides me can talk, you know. Yeah, one of the things was, is the placement of the fence. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Ms. Jensen, would you be amenable to uh, placing the new fence at the location of the existing fence instead of at the, uh, at the porch? Um, I would rather not. Um, the reason for this is the way the existing fence is, is it has to curve behind the oak tree. Mm -hmm. The line that I've drawn for this could be a straight line, and even though it comes into play at partially in my front porch, it is in front of that big oak tree, because that oak tree, um, if, I, if I put the fence straight, um, it would go right through the two-third line of that oak tree. And that's, that's, I would, that oak tree is already having issues and I really don't want to hammer nails into it and do anything with it. It got struck by lightning years ago and it's been losing big branches. And How about going behind the oak tree? If I go behind it, then that puts me behind the air conditioner at 542. If I'm going to go straight, if you want me to do a straight span between the two houses, then that would put me, I think, close to the window, uh, the first window on the 542 what, side. Why don't you just do this? <laughs> you know? It, it doesn't have to be a straight line. It doesn't line, have to be a straight line. line. Well, I mean, I could angle it. It just, to me, it makes a lot more sense if it's visually a straight line that parallels the sidewalk. But if I can... If I can do some kind of meandering line, I mean, to do a U around the tree when you're installing the fence yourself and you're digging all the fence post holes for it, that really does add probably about four more. I would rather avoid doing that, but if that's what you guys tell me I have to do, then I'll, well, we, I'll we put a fence around the tree. <laughs> we generally don't allow people to bring fences beyond the front corner of the house. Or the, uh, and, and attached to the porches. It's generally at the front. The way Actually, generally it's back from the front corner of the house, but you're, you have some constraints here that we understand. But I would do, I would just do a little rectilinear, and, and it's not going to be, it's going to be two more fence posts. Uh, and if I, I were any better at it than you are, I would offer to come and help you dig them. <laughs> but I'm not, so I okay. count that. I, I guess I would need I would need you all to draw it out for me because the room is so echoey and I, I am 
having issues with hearing okay. anyway. So on, on the blue pad? Uh-huh. You've got it coming to the Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Take it back to as close as you can to the I can do that. It's so straight and then when you hit a good point to come forward to go around your tree, just kind of go around your tree and then go around it, either to the front or to the back. Christy, can you sketch this for her? I can, I mean, I can be creative. If you want the fence to go from the f corner of the house behind the porch to the corner of the house behind my porch, I can figure a way to do that that's relative. That, and that, and you, can, you can play with 90 degree angles and keep it, you know. It may just, I may just have to bring it in front of the tree and then mm -hmm. do a cut in whether so that my, so that the gate steps back, which yeah. would make sense to me for the gate to step back. That, that's true. It does. And, All right. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, any other, any other? Are you good with the foster PowerPoint? Uh, she, doesn't she have to go to the Board of Adjustment to put a, no, it's it's, it's, it's I, not a solid fence. It's okay. Okay. And so. it's in smart code, so we we don't have the same issues in smart code. Okay. Uh, I don't have any problem with it because it's it's transparent. It's not like we're putting a stockade fence up there. Right. You can still see. Yes. You can see through it. If it were solid, I would probably have a serious issue. Yeah. With it, but it's not. So. The postman will feel much better when I put up this kind of fence. <laughs> They're a little leery right now, and the police run by the street early in the morning, and my dogs are more than happy to greet them, and I'm pretty sure they're a little concerned some days. All right. Okay. And I will note, uh, I'm a neighbor. I live at 609 Martha Street, but the elevation change kind of from the sidewalk to the lot, there's a couple of feet between the two. Yeah, so it's almost, honestly, I've never noticed the fence over there before, and I don't see any issue with, with the the new fence that you're proposing. I think it's going to be a good addition to the neighborhood. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. May I have a motion then? I move that we approve Ms. Jensen's request as discussed and presented by the board members. Second. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, Tara Satoris. Request for the approval of a rear addition and canopies for the property located at 115 Henrick Street, Cottage Hill. Greetings, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. Well, isn't that a beautiful sight? <laughs> <laughs> Can I take this down to, for you to hear yeah. me? Or? Yes. Okay. So, well, um, you're looking at a view of a, a building that's about to go under some serious renovation. and. We've already done a lot of internal demolition and I'm putting together the inside part and actually this request doesn't deal with the front at all. That was approved in a, in a former um, uh, proposition or proposal, but, but this, this, if you'll go up one, I think, well, I don't know what order these are in. Okay, right here. So the part that is affected is in that dark, dark corner back there. <laughs> That is, um, you, you can see it from Hanrick or from Heron Street, but really it's so far set back that it's hardly visible at all. Um, um, what I'm wanting to do is um, basically put a tub space in the bathroom. That, win that large window on the right is uh, a bathroom, and I want to make a little niche for a tub to go in there because otherwise it's super tight, and I'm trying to get the the entire facility, the entire downstairs of the facility to be um, ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. So I, I needed to get a little more space for, the, for a wheelchair to kind of turn around in there. And, um, and so I just want to pooch it out three feet and then run along six feet on that same face there. All right. And put the window in the same relative position. So there's the um, floor plan. And it would just be where that tub is, so it's just a little um, outcropping there. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the tub. All right. 
And you also want to put a canopy on the north side? Yes, and then the third, the third thing would be, so this is kind of how it would look um, with little, and then we'd extend the roof over there, and then we'd have this enclosure for utilities because um, we want to be able to store some tools out there. But the canopy is on the is on the new construction, mm -hmm. which is a, a kind of on the inside. It's all one. It's kind of all one space. It's kind of contiguous. You can go from one to the other. So the um, oh yeah, and I wanted to ask y'all. So there are two different options for this this window on the face, um, either the larger window or a smaller window. And I think I don't know. Um, this is this is. I don't know if option one is above there. Okay. Yeah, there's the small window, option one. And then down below is option two. It would still be, um, I, I like this one better in a way, but I'm not attached. It's kind of up to y'all what you think would be aesthetically best. And then the third, and then if we go down, there's the canopy. And if you'll see that that ramp there goes all the way around the building, and mm -hmm. um, the the ramp is wood, and the water just comes pouring down off the roof. And also, I think that it looks really nude on the back of the, that space. I think the canopy is going to make it a lot more um, I don't know, cohesive, I guess, and it will also protect the the ramp. So that's all. I think the bump out for the tub and the window is fine, whichever one you want to do. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. It's not like it's a, a right. strong design element on any facade of the house. Yes. I'm a little confused by the canopy because I don't think it's going it, to, I can't tell how wide it is. And, it, uh, and as it's drawn, it looks like it's too high to really keep much water off of anybody on the ramp or the ramp. Um, there's a canopy around the back also, and yes. the water, you know, the water comes down and it lands on the canopy and then, uh -huh. it, and then it, it, it sends it further away from the building as it is, it's coming right off the roof and then dropping right down on the ramp and it's okay. making it really slippery. And, um, I, so, I, so is the canopy about three feet wide? That's what it looks like. Um, I, I. Let, it might let, be white. let me see what I have. Okay. I mean, we have the plans for when y'all approve that. Let me mm -hmm. see. Let me see. Go, go ahead and keep talking. I'm, I'm looking for it. <laughs> it would match the other canopies. Okay. And are you, are you going to go around the corner or are you going to have it divided so that water falls on the corner un, unimpeded? The, I don't want to close up the corner necessarily. Okay. Um, I just want the water to come down off the roof and land on the canopy. And on go something away else, the yes. A little bit of rain on that one flat spot is fine, but um, all going up on a slant, I think it's it's a little dangerous. Yeah. And I've just had to I've had to pressure wash it a couple times, and it's kind of I don't know. I just think for maintenance and everything else, it's going right. to be better. And I think it'll look better because that that whole side of the building is just so stark. Mm -hmm. So, Christy, this was prior approved, the canopy? Yes. Um, it, but that two-story building is new. Mm -hmm. um, that was an addition that was approved. The ramp is three and a half feet wide. Okay, good. And I've not seen a dimension. On the canopy. I think the canopy is also three and a half feet. It's the same. Uh, if you can look at the, the the image on the on the right, that canopy goes all the way the width of the of the ramp. Uh huh. And it's the same on the front. It would be the same. Okay. Okay. I, I was gonna say there are a couple photos of the canopy with the ramp, and it it looks like they're at least as wide as each other. Right. Right. Uh, it won't help in a storm, but then again, nothing else, nothing would. So that's true. But in normal rain, it would, I think, provide some protection of the other ramp to keep it from 
getting getting rained on continuously. All right. Any comments from the audience? Did I ask that already? Not yet. Any more comments from the board? <clears throat> then may I have a motion. I move that we approve as submitted and uh, window choice is up to the applicant. All right. Second. All in favor? Opposed? All right. Thank you. Tim. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Andrew Zemanski. Andrew, you're at number one and number three, Goldthwaite Street, Bob Chipman's old buildings, I guess. Yes, they are Bob Chipman's old buildings. Uh, my business partner, uh, Will O'Connor, and I purchased those February of last year and have been working to develop them as best we can over the past year and are here with the proposal for a deck to be put on the back side of one and three North Goldthwaite. Um, they are commercial spaces. All right. And there's, there's, there used to be a deck there. Is there not a deck there now? Uh, actually, I... I, I don't believe there was a deck there. There was. Uh, well, it was smaller than this, but there was sort of a deck there. Oh, was there? Yeah. Well, then, yeah, I wasn't okay. aware of that. Um, the uh, but it would make sense because there are the steps going into the back of three North Gold Fleet mm -hmm. are a little bit elevated, so are li they're a little awkward. So, um, our proposal for the deck is uh, not just uh, uh, an aesthetic, but it's really because Will and I are also planning on owner occupying those two spaces. We've leased the other two out to mm -hmm. two wonderful tenants. And so for this proposal, it really kind of falls in line. We're planning on putting a coffee shop at one North Goldthwaite and at three North Goldthwaite will be a bar and bicycle repair shop in the same space. It's the reason why the ramp up is designed the way it is because it's actually to accommodate people uh, basically walking their bicycles into the back of three, which is where the service shop will be for Capital City Bicycle Repair Shop. Um, but then the deck also is to give outdoor uh, space for people either in the coffee shop or in the bar to be able to be outside and enjoy the neighborhood that way. Uh, obviously, given the way the world has been this past year, we know that outdoor and spacing is extremely important, and so we wanted to provide that. Also, really, just kind of... Uh, the that corner of the building I mean, we think this will just be a really nice element to those spaces as well bicycle repair shop and bar yeah so uh i'm, I'm not opposed I, I just i don't know if i've heard those two combined before. yeah we actually uh it was in uh asheville north carolina we went to a place called the hub which is a bicycle shop and a uh, craft beer bar and we sat there for a couple of hours just watching these mechanics while we were having a couple of drinks working on bicycles. But part of us doing this for Cottage Hill is we wanted to do as much for the neighborhood to have as many amenities and services. And so Will and I are both avid bicyclists uh, and thought that would be a cool combination. So they're going to work well together. There'll be a bar inside for drinks, and then we'll build in a smaller version of that where it'll have the stands, the tool drawers and all of that and we already have a, a, a individual a company that's a business that's going to be operating that so Excellent. we're excited about that well, John, I got a, I got a James bike Brothers has in 20 years I'd like yes to. yeah James like, Brothers has one in Opelika just like that really yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah James I've Brothers. got a Trek bike I hadn't ridden in 20 years so I'll bring it to you and have a couple yeah of yeah there definitely like, there we go there we go I like it there there was a uh, there used to be a bar in Birmingham called, that was uh, a bar and chainsaw repair. Hmm. But I later found out that it was a euphemism. You gotta use that bar. square footage to the max, so you know. <laughs> Whatever. Hey. Alcohol makes everything better, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but really the goal of the deck is, is, is to give that outdoor space that we know a lot of people enjoy and yep. you know, to have yep. a closed outdoor area. It's a lot nicer, especially during the Summertime in Alabama. Sit outside and enjoy your bike and beer. Right. <laughs> this week would be great. It'd be great to have another bike shop in town. It will be. Yeah, that's what, and, and really a bike shop that's focused on the ca more, a little more casual um, cyclists. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to have all of the extensive, but our hope is in a few years to partner with someone. There's these new like Brooklyn bicycle that you can go on, customize it. They send the kits to like vendors like like we may become, and then we do the assembly and fittings and stuff like that. So, 
Um, uh, my day job is an organization called River Region Trails. We're trying to build more uh, pedestrian infrastructure here in Montgomery, so bicycles are definitely a part of that as well. All right. All right. Has this been submitted to the city yet? Which, this proposal? Uh -huh. Uh-huh. Not the deck, no. This okay. has been submitted to y'all only we, at this point. We don't conform to ADA and things like that, but I, I'm not quite sure it conforms to ADA, so you may need to just verify those items. Yeah, we, um, uh, we're working with um, Steenhouse Architects, uh, Scott and Heather. They had checked on that. The ramp, uh, it's a 120, and so uh, they said that it was fine as it is, but obviously once we get this well, approved and we yeah, drive permitting. I would check we'll, on it because it's, it's the elevation change too. You know, you just can't have a 18 inch drop right 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 a, a rail yeah stairs, well, stairs typically need a rail on both sides you know that egress for handicraft accessibility um, yeah. that's required out of all these uh public areas and i'm not quite sure about the bathrooms either but they can but. get they can get in the front door yeah they could they well you gotta have if you gotta have two exits out though yeah all right so you got to get to you. So um, there's code, a, there's a code lot. Code enforcement will catch you if that's not. Yeah, if that's yeah, not. yeah. We're, we're, I mean, not, plan, we're not code enforcement, but I I think I do see some irregularities there. Yeah, I mean our plan was really to get it approved by y'all first because we're still finalizing um, our entire floor plans for both spaces, and so this is obviously a major component of finalizing that process. All right. Well, this is excellent. If there are no there's no further comments, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? All right, thank you. Thank you very a much. A bicycle shop I could actually ride to. Yeah. yeah, yeah I have to put excited. it in the car and take it. Thank you. Don't think you can get a DUI riding a bike. I'll have to check that. You can. <laughs> I think you can. You can in public talk. You can be arrested for public intoxication. That John, you are on the record saying that now. Um, <laughs> He was just he, as a lawyer, he was just reminding me of my personal and professional responsibilities. Uh, well, we had minutes in the last meeting that were mailed out. Does anybody have any, any addition to correction? If not, they stand approved as mailed. Uh, meeting adjourned.